Hello, I am Shostakovich. Welcome to my world. Welcome to the 1930s Russia. We are under the cruel dictatorship of Joseph Stalin. Every day the people of my country live in terror. Am I safe? Are you safe? Is anyone safe? It is anybody's guess. The government tries to define what good music ought to be, and in doing so, they have banned the wonderful music of many fantastic composers. Beethoven, hmm, he's okay. But who cares about Beethoven when you could have Shostakovich? Hmm? But I live in fear of my music being taken away. These are dark times, dark indeed. Mr. Stalin, he does not like me, no. He came to a performance of my opera, Lady Macbeth, and he hated it. The next day, the newspaper said my music was corrupting, and I suffered many personal attacks. I cannot even sleep in my bed anymore. I must lie in the stairwell, awaiting my arrest. I must spare my family, you see. My life is not good right now. And so we come to symphony number five. Where is number four, you say? Well, I rejected it when it was only in rehearsal. I decided to call it a Soviet artist's response to just criticism. I did everything that I was required to do by the government. A heroic tone, lyrical music, drawing on inspiration from traditional Russian literature. But you see, if you listen very closely, you will hear my despair and anguish beneath the pleasing melodies and sweet little ditties. Now, I could talk about my symphony all day and night, but I will spare you. I will only expose you to the fourth and final movement for today. I knew that I had to come up with an upbeat ending for the symphony. To do otherwise would anger Stalin, and my fate was hanging in the balance. To conclude with the sadness and melancholia of the third movement was simply not an option. And besides, what kind of composer would I be if I only repeated my previous ideas? I made the final movement a celebration. Some people think I have the happy tone sounds forced. Maybe they are right, maybe they are wrong. Huh, a magician never reveals his secrets. And so the movement begins with a string of march-like themes. They have quite a swaggering attitude, you see, because I really turned my swag on when I was composing. <laughs> the pace of the music, it grows and grows and the orchestra plays musical currents that are just bursting with triumph until all hope is dashed by another dead end. The music that follows suggests a quiet remembrance for those who are gone. Everyone in Russia can relate to this because everyone has lost someone. Me, I lost some family members to the prison camps, but I also lost myself somewhere along the way too. <laughs> maybe, one, maybe one day I will find myself again through music. Now, in a traditional symphony, you might think at this point that there will be a brisk march to sweep us to victory. But I am Shostakovich. I am not traditional. Come on, I'm wearing a dress. <laughs> so, instead of something upbeat, a deadly slow march begins. I compose my music like I make my coffee dark, like my, <laughs> like my soul. Now I reveal my triumphant ending. Yes, finally, after four entire movements, we are reaching the epic conclusion. You can get up out of your chair. You can get a drink. You can go to the toilet. It is up to you. It is finished. My ending, it's in B-flat minor. Now I know what you are thinking. After so much time making his way to the major scale, why does he return to the minor at the end? What is wrong with this man? Well, I will tell you. It is my secret signal that the happy harmonies of the ending are as false as this accent. So now we are coming to the end of this video. All in all, I think that symphony number no. five really reflects my situation, an artist who is constantly judged and not on my talent. Some audiences might hear condemnation of the government in my music. I refuse to comment. Luckily, Stalin found it acceptable. So I am reprieved, at least for another decade.